Hi folks, it's the full moon in Scorpio and time to finish up this interclation and uh, exfoliation series. And what we're going to do today is build two batteries, uh, one with a borax separator here and one with the boric acid separator. And if you uh, followed my last video, you know that what I'm doing in this with the borax separator is moving sodium from the uh, PVA and taking it over to uh, the phosphoric acid uh, in the intercalated graphite here to form trisodium phosphate. And then in the boric acid uh, cell will be moving boron from the PVA over to the uh, to the intercalated graphite and forming uh, borophosphate and we'll test these cells and see what the differences are okay let's get to it uh, I've got the intercalated graphite already on the positive electrodes here titanium dioxide and PVA are on the negative electrodes and our separator papers are right here so all we have to do is basically just paint on our graphite put them together and test them hook up our negative here and we have 1045 climbing fast 106 7 8 111 still climbing 112, 13, 15. It should stop about 120, but it's, and you can see it's slowing down now. There's 117. Alright, looks like 117.2. Let's test it right there. Now I'm on the 10 milliamp setting. I'm assuming it's going to be a powerful battery. So, watch right there. Here's the amps. 3, 2, 1. 5.8 to start. Yeah, 580 milliamps. Or 0.58, I guess it was. Alright, 1.7, 117.2. And... 580. Alrighty, and look, we're back to 109, 2, 3, and climbing. And it'll do the usual droppage and dropping voltages as it uses up the free water. And it looks like it's going to stop there at, we'll measure it at 110. That should be about it. There's 110. Alright, 3, 2, 1. 6.4. Thought it was going to be four something, and then it jumped on up. So now we got 640 milliamps. My pen. 110. 110 and 640. All right. Now we're back up to 105. Going slowing down All right, that's pretty slow right there let's test it at 105.6 okay. 105.7 3, 2, 1 6.1 that time so 6.4 is going to be our high it looks like and that was on the second one. The last cell we built, we peaked on the third time. And we're at, uh, what, 105, wasn't it? And 6-1. Okay. Now this will go down to some minimal voltage and then it will start climbing back up if it follows the usual pattern, which I suspect it will. So we'll test this one at 103, it looks like. It's going to be pretty close to it. Is 
it's going to go higher a bit. Yeah, I'm going to wait for that to happen. Ready? Alright, three, two, one, five, eight at that time. give this one a, just a minute or two extra and see how high it goes. Alright, we made it back to 103.2 and so we'll test it there at 103.3 now and see what we got. I think we're probably at the bottom of the, uh, the, the voltage drop and now we're starting to use the structured water in the cell, I think. So here we go. 3, 2, 1. 6.1 again. Alright, so this looks like it's going to hold at 6.1, 610 milliamps, and that was 103.3 that time. Okay, now it should start climbing and going higher, actually. So we'll have to let this one wait, though, a uh, couple more extra minutes so we can see if it's actually climbing higher or not. I'll be back. All right, I'm back, and you can see we just flipped to 103.8. So we are on the increase again on the voltage. Now let's see uh, if what I'm interested in is seeing if the amps also increase now. Alright, ready? 3, 2, 1, 6, 4 again. Yes they did. Woohoo! So we're at 1, oh, 3, 8 and we're back up to our peak again, 640. Alright, let's uh, let it charge up again and see what happens. All right, I'm back. Oh man, I just realized you can't see these meters. Jesus. All right, I think we're back and we're at 104.2 now. I'm sorry, I should have had these uh, check these meters better. Make sure you can see them. Anyway, but uh, now you can see it, and we're, we're at 10. We just popped up to 104.3 right now. So let's test it there and see if we uh, get a amperage increase along with the voltage. Alrighty, here we go. Three, two, one, six, four again. Well, looks like we're hanging at six four and one o four. I think it went to four actually. All right, now we have to see how long it'll sustain that, and, uh, and then when it gets, runs out of water, we'll start seeing the voltage drop back off again. I'll be back. All right, we're back, and it's climbed again. We're at 105.6 this time. Let's see what our amps are. Ready? Three, two, one. Uh, five, four? I'm not sure exactly what that was. Five, four, I think. It'll flash something before that. Uh, so one oh five, I think it's back to seven. All right, we're back to one oh one almost already. And self charge on it gets uh, faster as it uh, recovers. Uh, I'll be back. All right, I'm back, and now it looks like we're. We're uh, having a hard time getting to 105, so with the <coughs> amperage drop last time, and now it looks like we're going to have a voltage drop. It looks like it's, uh, we're running out of water. So uh, let's test the amps here and see what we got. Ready? 3, 2, 1. Climb to 4, 5. So, uh, yeah, it's running out. That's another sign that's getting low, I've noticed. If, when it's got plenty of water, it'll start high and drop off. When it's lower on water it'll ramp up and drop off. And so uh, I climbed to 4 or 5 at that time. 1, 4, oh, oh, 4, 9. Alright. Okay, now uh, <coughs> I'll just test the other battery 
and uh, and record all the same information and then we'll compare the two. I'll be back. Alright, I'm back with the uh, boric acid one and we've got a higher voltage and I just put it together I figured I might as well show you and we got a higher voltage on going on this one than we did on the other one. Get that out of the way. See this stuff. They were at 118. Oh, it was, but it's, now it's coming back down. It was 118.8. And I peaked that, now it's coming back down. So let's test it right there before it drops too much. Ready? 3, 2, 1, 5, 8 again. That's uh, started the same as the other one did. Alright, but a higher voltage. 118.8 and dropping. And we had uh, 580 again. And I think that just means it's not transporting anything yet because the other than that, the cells are basically the same. That's climbing back pretty fast to uh, 110. That's where we tested the second one out. I'll be back in a second. I'm running out of time. So. Well, didn't have to wait too long. It stopped about 108, 108.7. Well, it's 108.8. All right, so let's we'll see what we got here. Three, two, one. Damn. Five something again? Shit, I'm going to have to watch the video myself to see what that was. All right, I'll be back later. All right, I'm back. And I've cycled uh, this second battery now eight times just like they did the first one and you can see that it just uh, got progressively worse <coughs> so either the boric acid doesn't work very well in there or there's some other problem so we're going to take it apart real fast and take a look at the electrodes and stuff and see what happened all right I don't see any problem there but this is the ooh. Boy, that's not coming off very easy. It is coming, though. Aha. Uh -huh. Looks like we've got some bleed through there. See that in the middle there, that dark area? So, uh, it's not necessarily boric acid. It's uh, a bleed through problem, looks like, on that one. So, uh, but this one didn't. The, the borax, the miracle molecule, uh, <laughs> performed well again. As a matter of fact, it performed, performed better than the, the last time. But um, uh, we noticed the first signs of wa uh, water loss was right here, and then the very next charge, it had a hard time getting back up there to the same voltage. <clears throat> so, uh, and it looks like this. This, uh, I mean, that was pretty quick. That was seven cycles it took to get that and that's getting shorter and I think that's because we're making a more powerful battery we're using up more water faster so that would make sense anyway so uh, next thing to do would be uh, I guess uh, enclose this in a bag with an air hole in it so it can get oxygen to there and uh, and run it some cycles and see uh, and see how long it lasts then I'm back with one last thing I was just thinking there's actually another way I could uh, exfoliate this uh, interclated graphite. I could just take some of the interclated graphite and mix some borax with it and then put it back on the stirrer and stir it for a while and then the uh, sodium from the borax would replace the hydrogens on the phosphoric acid and make trisodium phosphate in there and because the sodium is bigger than hydrogen it's going to it should spread start to spread those uh, leaves off of that graphite and exfoliate it and make uh, graphene easy so uh, I'm going to try that alright thanks for watching folks and I'll see you next time